everything okay? If it lands on that one, we got trouble. We Welcome don't. to we don't. Uh, more. Because what we gave you just was not enough. You can't get enough of these two boys. And here we are. We're gonna take your questions about how the human body functions and all of its mysteries. And give you 100% accurate, scientifically based answers. Right. But first, uh, a little, little freeze frame. Okay, it was in there, you know? Something happened, a story was told, we don't know what it was, but you do. All right, ask us a question, Stevie. We're two well-educated guys who also uh, go on the internet. Well, this time, uh, one of the three of us actually does have a scientific explanation, but yep. we won't lead with that. We oh, no, we have it. No, no, no. Yeah, you mean, we, we have it. You, you, you sure. mean me, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Okay. Why can't we keep our eyes open when we sneeze? This is from at Designs Beckford. At Designs Beckford, good question. I mean, I mean, you know what most people say. It's so that your eyes don't fly out of your head because of the sheer force of sneezing. But really, the, what it is is that your eyes, the lids uh, are just the end of a long, stringy muscle that goes all the way back down through your head and right. goes right in there into a little part of your nose. And when you uh, right. when you sneeze. sneeze, it has to get out of the way and so it pushes on a little thing. And it closes. That closes like a lid. You, have you ever seen those things, like the things that your grandma would have that she kept her bread in? Oh it was yeah. like a wooden thing and it was like wooden. And right. it was kind of rigid, but also sort of flexible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bread box. It's, it's basically, your face is a bread box, is what a lot of the doctors say. Right. And uh, so it's like this, so like Link looks at me, and so, don't sneeze, <laughs> you know, in, in this illustration, but what would basically happen Achoo. is, boom. No, other way, so when you sneeze, Achoo. boom. It blows it out of the way and closes it, Achoo. and then, Achoo. boom, yeah. And why is that? From an evolutionary standpoint, it's because when you sneeze, um, you don't want to see people watching you sneeze. Right, it's an embarrassment clause. It's just embarrassing, you know, it, it, it's kind of like, it, it, it's, it really takes your confidence down and then you're, you're, you're easy prey. Yeah, that's, that's the ad adaptive reasoning, yeah. Next question, All unless right. you have anything and to Stevie, add. You have something Stevie. different from Wikipedia or some crap yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, I have something from scienceabc.com. Oh, a kid's website? It is actually possible to keep your eyes open when you sneeze, but it's not likely right. or practical. Right. A sneeze is a way for the body to expel irritants and foreign particles. Your eyes instinctively close to prevent the expelled irritants from re-entering the body through your eyes. Also, yeah, your face okay. is a bread box. Right, that, uh, okay, thank the you. the other part thank of that. Thank you for that, your face Why is a bread box. do some people get singular hiccups sometimes, just the one every now and then? This is from at Charles Jade Hump. I Charles like Jade I like Hump. Hump in there. Charles Jade Hump. Uh, honestly, I'm not familiar with this phenomenon because uh, I, th I, th I think yeah. I think this is a trap. It's actually impossible to have a singular hiccup, which is, would be called a well, hic. Here, here. Like hi yep. hiccups are called hiccups because they at least come in pairs, and the first one is a hic, and the second one is an up. That's, however, that's why it's called however, a hiccup. However, while it is very very rare, for s there are some people who experience just a hick, and those are people who have made a deal with the devil. Okay. Right, you're talking about like blues singers? Yeah, well right. you blues singers, fortune tellers, um, you, you've got people who buy Ouija boards. Some, you got some people, politicians. People who dress up like witches at Halloween, people who do too much decorating at Halloween, uh, people who do mean looking jack-o'-lanterns especially, yep. people who do not Celebrate St. Patrick's Day, um, and and but even those people, they die in the middle of a hiccup. Yeah, right. So they just hit. Also, people who don't celebrate Mother's Day because they're like, it's a Hallmark thing. Those people also made a deal with the devil. So those people are known to suffer from just a hit. Right. It's hiccup. invented by the card company. I'm not falling for the capitalist uh, thing. Those okay, people. so the answer is um, the devil. 
it is why this some yeah, people yeah, get yeah, singular yeah, yeah. hiccups. It deals with the devil. Okay. That's the only way it could happen because it actually doesn't happen. It, otherwise, in, it doesn't in happen. Non spiritual. Right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. That makes Influence sense. Right. It's a spiritual phenomenon. Also, a hiccup is a spasm of your diaphragm. Prolonged hiccups are a result of an irritation that causes multiple spasms. A single hiccup is probably from minor irritation that can be relieved by one single sp- spasmodic, spasmodic uh, yeah. contraction of the diaphragm, such this as is a not theoretical having taken enough oxygen, it doesn't... too much alcohol stuck in your su- stomach, food stuck at the bottom of your stomach, a burp that went the wrong way, etc. Eh, this was from Quora. I, it's a little a bit A burp less. that went the wrong yeah, way. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Let's, let, hey, let's, let's uh, just call it a fart. Let's get real here. It's Satan. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you've only you've only helped us out with this one. Don't confuse me with that crap, ZV. It's clearly the activity of Satan in the world. You know, I'm fighting off a burp going the wrong way right now. <laughs> yeah, bless that boy. <laughs> bless that boy. Me. Dreams. Uh, I just get a little weird movie to watch while I sleep that doesn't make any sense, yet I was the one thinking it at Dream PTLL. Praise the Lord, P- PTLL. Praise the Lord, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> Praise the Lord, 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 Lord. I don't want to burst anybody's bubble here, but I want you to understand something. Uh, dreams are not what you think they are. Dreams, my friends, are the reality, and this is the dream. Think about that. Pinch me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, see, this is a dream right now. Every time you you pinch someone, they actually start to dream. That's a corollary I didn't know, and I didn't know about that. Right, it's a corollary That's new fact. to me. Right, yeah. Right, pinch me, pinch me, up. Now you're dreaming. I'm now dreaming. <laughs> Interesting. I don't know how that fits. I don't know how it fits. I have to incorporate. Well, I said it was a corollary. Corollary. Okay. It's a corollary. Just, don't fit. I'll, They're kind of like attached. I'll spend some time. I'll spend some time thinking about that. Yeah, but the, the the thing that you experience when you go to sleep that you're calling a movie that plays in my head. There's many theories in this on this side of the equation for that. People say things like, oh, it's memories, uh, you know, sort of like recycling or whatever, your brain organizing information during REM sleep, whatever. That's all bull crap, not true. Basically what happens is you're getting a very, very small glimpse into the greater reality of which we are all a part, but very few of us actually ever connect fully with it. And there are some cultures in history that have understood that that is the ultimate reality. And they actually go there on a regular basis and come back and bring real tangible information here to the dreamland that we all live in. You could be like them if you would just stop and get out of the rat race and stop reading what the scientists say. Right, it's like yeah. New Englanders. They're all, the, all the scientists are operating according to um, essentially a large-scale conspiracy, uh, a left-wing large-scale conspiracy, <laughs> all, in, all in service of the cabal. And the moment that you recognize that that's actually what's going on, your life will be 10 times better. But then you might wake up, which means you're going to sleep. Yeah, that's what he said, yeah. (laughs) Don't forget it. Don't forget that. Okay, so what does the Illuminati (laughs) say, Stevie? Um... It's, it's so it says dreams are hallucinations that occur during certain stages of sleep. Uh, when you're awake, your thoughts have a certain logic to them. When you sleep, your brain's still active, but your thoughts or dreams often make little or no sense. This may be because the emotional centers of the brain trigger dreams rather than the logical reg- regions. Though there's no definitive proof, dreams are usually autobiographical thoughts based on your recent activities, conversations, or other issues in your life. Overall, though, the role of dreams in the human psych- psyche and the Reason for their creation is still being studied to this day. Still being studied. You see that one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And we're still studying if the Earth is a globe. <laughs> still studying. Why are yawns contagious? This seems a bit ridiculous from at Tucknuck. <laughs> yawns are contagious because, um, uh, again, evolutionarily speaking, it's you, you see someone open their mouth 
And it's like, all right, it's feeding time. I got to get in on this. Mm -hmm. If if like if you're gonna get fed, well, I'm gonna get fed. Like I want to get I want to get a little I want to get mama birded. It's essentially well. it's essentially the baby bird phenomenon, right? Uh, we're, and and what you will find, a lot of people are like, oh, this person's got a case of the yawns, <laughs> and uh, uh, there's there's only one way to stop it, and it's just to throw. <laughs> Throw a hard boiled egg right in there. Hard boiled egg. <laughs> hard boiled egg is the best it's, thing. It's got to be hard boiled. Which, which unpeeled, <laughs> unnpeeled, unpeeled hard boiled egg. Unpeeled hard, and, uh, hard boiled egg. They will perk right up. And but right you, but you know what? You see a lot of people doing what you call yawning, and if they're not hard boiled egged, <laughs> then they're what's going to happen is oftentimes you'll find themselves being sleepy or actually going to sleep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's because um, without being fed, they have to conserve yeah. their energy. And so they just fall asleep in order to um, stave off their slow death by starvation. Yeah. Well, and this is one of the reasons that I always carry a hard-boiled egg in my back left pocket. And if you find me... In a day like today, and I don't have it. It's well because I already used it. I used it earlier. Earlier, Stevie was she, yawning. She was yawning. She was nodding off, and uh, I had to throw it really hard to get through her mask. <laughs> she <laughs> and, ate her mask. That's, no, but that's why fine. Stevie has a big hole in her mask right now because oh. I threw a hard boiled egg through it. Are you okay, by the way? It's just a hole in my bread box. <laughs> It's amazing to see. Yeah, right, yeah. Every day, I use that egg. Um, I need that back, by the way. If you're into this, <laughs> check out our podcast, where we just spew Bull crap knowledge the time. Uh, for over an hour, every week. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, if you want to watch us spew the knowledge, uh, on YouTube, we post our conversations. I'm told it's soothing, yeah, comforting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it was like a companion to your life. Every Sunday on YouTube, watch us talk to each other. You know, as the, as the year wraps up, we talk about our top purchases yeah. of of the year. In this case, twenty twenty two. And then uh, to wrap things up, we also talk about on another episode like our our most meaningful moments oh, yeah. from the year. It's, That's a, always, it's always it's always one of my favorite things to do. Uh, seriously, it helps the, you remember that you lived your life this year. You should talk about the stuff that meant the most to us for the year, you know. And uh, sometimes you surprise me with your stuff, and yep. uh, and sometimes I don't listen. But uh, yep. you should listen mm -hmm. and watch on Ear Biscuits, youtube.com slash Ear Biscuits. So, this is interesting. I mean, we I think we knew this to a certain extent, but it may be related to a ph phenomenon called social mirroring. mirroring where organisms imitate the, the hole in my the hole in my mouth is still yeah I, th I threw it hard. Um, imitate the actions of others. Other behaviors fall into this category, such as scratching, leg crossing, and laughing. When animals mimic others, they tend to be recognizing a useful behavior. Yawning tends to draw in oxygen rapidly and helps stretch internal organs to lighten up the body. So it's likely that your brain recognizes someone else's yawn as useful behavior and then prompts you to do it yourself. Oh, that could be useful. Yeah, I, I should do that. The weird yeah, thing really? about yawning is like it's cross species too. Have you noticed? That? Oh yeah, I, a dog will make me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, well, I'll throw an egg at a dog too. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I, right through his mask. I don't. I don't. I don't keep those eggs just for people. Any species yawns at me, I'll throw an egg in there. But if you see Rhett reach for his back left pocket, <laughs> you duck. You better be ready. Duck. Why can we raise every finger one by one, but not our toes from at KX Mill? Dumb question. <laughs> what? <laughs> well, I know that I actually do know the answer. So, um, we I never, think I can, I think I can do this. You think you can raise each toe? Yeah. I okay. mean, oh, 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 yeah. all right. <laughs> I'd be really surprised if you can. Based on what I know about it, you're gonna show your feet on the on the internet for free. Oh, did you see it? A lot of stuff flew out of her. <laughs> yeah. Like, when was the last time you took a sock off? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So now just it, place it flat. Here's on no, my no, toes. No, 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 no. Place it flat on and the then on the on the floor. Place it flat. What do you?
you talking? And now see if you can raise it up. Raise up each individual toe. <coughs> so start with your big one. Okay, yes. There's the big one. Now everybody can do that, I would think. Okay, all right. I, I would have trimmed my toe hairs. <laughs> Go with this one. That, this little piggy, no, so you did that one too. This little piggy needs to stay down. This little piggy needs to stay down. Okay, what about this one? No, okay, and what about, see, no, you can't do it. <laughs> and the reason you can't do it is because Look how, what's it's, all that fuss? It's never offered any any adaptive advantage. However, there is a tale uh, from ancient Egypt in which a guy. I can move my, look, I can just move my pinky. Well, that's pretty impressive, Link. Uh, but I need, to, I need to explain this because this is important stuff because people, people have a question, why can't you do this? There was one guy in ancient Egypt, a lot of the records show this, around 35, 3600 BC, who could do it and he, he was able to do it and it was just so annoying that he was able to do this that they just they killed him on the spot. He was never able to pass his genes on. So the one time that has evolved is the you one time that You made pass my genes on? Yeah. So I'm glad you weren't able to do it because if you if you were able to do it, I was going to have to get that egg from Stevie and murder you with it. How ain't going to murder me with an egg? The crazy thing is that you can train yourself to lift every toe individually. Basically, it's it's because we don't use our toes in that way and they're confined to shoes usually that you're you don't have that like connection to your brain and Preach. your toes, but then if you train yourself, you you can. If you yeah, if you need to use your feet in a in a, in a way, you too. Like the guy in uh Daniel Day Lewis. There's a guy in Daniel Day Lewis. <laughs> yeah. yeah, the guy who got inside oh of God. Daniel Day Lewis for that movie My Left Foot, and 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 did all the foot puppetry. <laughs> <laughs> that is crazy. It, but in his, it's his hand too. Yeah, well, of course. Because <laughs> you know. Daniel Day Lewis can't do his feet like that. Somebody put their hands in Daniel Day Lewis's feet and did all that work. <laughs> He's still in there. <laughs> He's still He's in still there. Good. That was part of the contract. It's like once you go in, you can't come out. <laughs> There's no Daniel Day exit. <laughs> uh, There's a joke in there about daylight. Like, yeah, yeah. Can't see the Daniel Daylight, yeah. and there's also an exit egg joke. I just yeah, like yeah, back left pocket. It. <laughs> it's it's uh, one of those. Uh, there. Oh, we can just find it. Help us win some signal awards. Dispatches from Myrtle Beach and Best Friends Back. All right, are nominated, and we need your votes. So click on the link in the description.